Hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to my shop. This video is pretty much just an intro video for a series of videos that I plan on working on here over the next, I don't know, couple of months or whatever. And I'm gonna title the series Sack Whittling. S-A-K, Sack, like Swiss Army Knife. Uh, and what it's really going to be is just a series of videos where the only real tool that I'm going to use will be a Swiss Sarmi knife. Um, slightly modified, but nothing crazy, something that pretty much anybody could do, I'm assuming they had a Swiss Army knife um, and some basic sharpening supplies, which you would need anyway to maintain a sharp edge. You might wonder, well, why would you want, why would you want to do that? Well, for one thing, I mean, obviously, if you look around, I have a pretty well-equipped shop. I'm really, really lucky. Not everybody has lots of tools, lots of space and all that stuff, but many more people um, might have a Swiss Army knife sitting around or some other similar knife. And access to twigs and sticks and small logs and branches and stuff like that. So these projects will focus on um, those elements. Uh, you'll have you'll need a Swiss Army knife and you'll need to be able to find some sticks, logs, small pieces of wood, things like that. And you could work in cutoffs, stuff that you should be able to get for free if you live anywhere that has trees, uh, basically. I mean, unless you're in a big inner city situation where, uh, you know, it wouldn't be okay to just take a small branch from a tree or something like that. But for most folks living outside the big city, you should be able to find some small pieces of wood fairly simply. So hopefully you can get your wood for free. A good Swiss Army knife, if you had to buy one new, you can pick up one that has the tools you'll need for this for, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. Uh, if you're willing to go the used route, you can find them on the very popular auction site for even less. And that's okay because often the reason they're on there is because somebody Oh, you know, dulled the blade or broke a tip off or something, something that you could easily fix and you could get it yourself into this even cheaper. The little kit that I'm going to use for these videos is pocketable, really. I mean, I probably won't put it in my pocket. I'll probably throw it in a backpack. And the idea is that you can take it with you, you know, when you're out and about, assuming nobody's too close and they don't mind you having a little pocket knife out. But a Swiss Army knife is pretty non-threatening. Most folks don't really even notice if you have one out. So, you know, it's not like sitting there with a giant carving knife or something. And um, so, you know, it, it's pretty easy to take it around. It's pretty portable. You could uh, take it on you with vacation. You know, you're not going to haul a whole tool shop around with you on vacation, but you could take it to the beach or, you know, whatever you're doing like that. So portability, affordability, and um, also just to challenge myself. Um, and this, this will force me to be creative and do some things that maybe I wouldn't normally have to do. I mean, it's really easy to, to, you know, make a large piece of wood a lot smaller with a bandsaw. Um, it's not really easy to do. You have to get a lot more creative if you're going to try to break something down with a Swiss Army knife. So we'll see what we can do. And uh, we may have to fashion some tools as we go out of wood and things like that. Another reason why I chose a Swiss Army knife for this series is, um, you know, for a relatively affordable price, you get a lot of little tools that fit into a very small space. If you've seen any of my other content, you'll know I, I really like Swiss Army knives um, because, I don't know, I just think they're cool. You know, the steel in a Swiss Army knife is not the hardest steel. It's not the best steel for a carving knife, but it's hard enough. And the trade-off is that it's relatively easy to keep sharp because it is a little bit softer. And as long as you're working with a softer wood or a little bit green wood, you know, where it's still a little bit wet, you can achieve some pretty good stuff with a Swiss Army knife. So, you know, small size, affordable price, a lot of nice little tools that you can use for different things. I think this is a really good choice and we can do, you can do a lot of things if you're creative with a Swiss Army knife. Let me take you over to the bench here quick and I'll show you the basically the kit that I'm going to be using for all these videos. All the tools that I'll be using for this, or at least the majority of this, the, the kit will fit inside an Altoids tin. Of course you don't need an Altoids tin, you could use anything. You could throw it in a paper sack, whatever makes you happy, or you could just carry it loose in your pocket. Um, but I like to have everything kind of contained. And um, so let me let me open this up. I have lots of Altoid tins around. I have an addiction. It's a real problem. So it's always nice when I can find a use for one of those tins. Uh, so anyway, inside you'll find a few things. Let me unpack this and we'll kind of talk about each element and their importance to the process here. So obviously the first thing inside there, and you'll notice if you position your knife just right, a 93 millimeter Swiss Army knife will fit in an Altoids tin 
almost perfectly, which is kind of cool. Uh, you have to get the key ring kind of offset to the corner, but it'll push right up into the top and actually fits in there pretty well. So that's kind of slick. So the knife that I'm going to use for this is this guy, and I believe this is a Field Master. So the reason it's a Field Master is it has opening layer, it has scissors, which you probably really won't need for this, but if I'm going to be carrying this around, I like to have scissors. So it has a pair of scissors. It has a saw. You will definitely be needing a saw. It has the larger blade, which I've not really done anything to other than to sharpen it. Um, and you'll probably need that. And we, I might, I might end up grinding this a little bit differently later on. But for now, pretty much just a stock large blade. And then the big difference here is the small blade has been altered. So here is this, ooh, that's dirty. But you can still see the profile, the shape of this one is a very much a spear point. So that's a what a normally, when you get a Swiss Army knife, um, the small blade has that shape to it. So I have changed the shape to be like this, which is basically just straight across. Um, and I, I prefer that shape for whittling and small little carving projects and things like that. Uh, if you'd like to know how I did this, you can do this with power tools or hand tools. I have a video on both. I'll be sure to link them here. And um, so anyway, otherwise it's not super complicated. You're just grinding it flat across here and then sharpening it really well. Um, I put a convex edge on my small whittling knives. It's what I prefer. Some people prefer a little micro bevel. Um, I also have a video on that if you want to see the differences and a kind of a slight comparison on the two. Um, so anyway, that's the big change here. So y you need that small blade, and in, for me, I like to have it ground like this, a little bit different. And then the only other tool that I'm probably going to end up using is an awl. Um, and really, that's just used to kind of make small holes and things like that. So I'm sure we'll find some uses for that as we go along. The tools you're going to want for this, big blade, small blade, saw, and all. There are lots of different models that will offer that tool set. Um, you probably don't want to use a Swiss Champ. There's some people that probably would, but in my hand a Swiss Champ is a little too big. Um, it's not comfortable to hold for any extended period of time. A three or four layer knife, this one's a four, is probably a little bit more comfortable in the hand. And if you're looking and you're trying to choose, I prefer one that has the Phillips over the corkscrew in this position. Um, and that's because the corkscrew is, in my hand, kind of hits me weird, and I don't like the feeling as much. And there's a lot of people that claim, well, if you put the small screwdriver in the corkscrew, it kind of gets rid of that hot spot. But I still would prefer to hold a knife that has the Phillips because it's just a little more rounded and more comfortable. So um, a field master, a climber, there's bunches of different models that will have the tools that, that you're looking for for this. So anyway. This is a Fieldmaster. Um, I like it. And so this is going to be the knife that I'm going to use for these projects. And again, that small blade is going to be the main tool. Other things that are in this kit, you're going to need some way to maintain your blade. Now, I'm not going to carry around a full sharpening situation. Um, it might not be a bad idea if you have like a small diamond stone or some other pocketable sharpening system. That might be cool to have with you, but I, I don't have one that's small and easy to carry around, but I don't really plan on needing one. Usually if I'm smart about it and I strop often enough, the only thing I really need to keep an edge on my carving knife is a strop. So what I've done is I've just taken a small piece of leather, rough side up, and attached it to just a little piece of fiberboard here, which was good and flat, and then put a little bit of polishing compound on there, and now I have a uh, strop that I can handhold and fits inside my tin. There's lots of other ways you could go about this, but this works for me. It's easy, it's portable, and I can keep my knife sharp out and about. Now, I probably will have to touch this knife up after doing a bit project. Next time I get back to the shop, I might have to hit it on the stones a little bit, but maybe not. You know, as long as you maintain your edge pretty well with a strop, you don't have to go back to stones unless you know you put a chip in it or you really dull it and you go too long. So the strop is the next thing in there. But the next thing, this guy, this is a pencil. 
Uh, you could call it a pencil holder, pencil extender, or a bullet pencil. It kind of hits several of those categories. I made this one. You can find similar things out and about on the web, but if you want to make one, it's not terribly complicated. They're kind of cool. They're easily pocketable. You can exchange the erasers. You can put, you know, any pencil type you like in there. This is a little Mitsubishi pencil. I really like Mitsubishi pencils, and it fits inside this brass, brass tube perfectly. So, if you want to see how to make one of these, you can go find that video. I'll be sure to post it here. Um, but it's really nice to have a pencil so that you can mark the things that you're working on or maybe sketch a little something if you have a little paper around. But I just use it to mark on my project. I like to kind of uh, sketch on it as I go sometimes. And you can keep your pencil sharp, of course, with your knife. So you don't need a sharpener. There's no big deal there. And so that that's the pencil. Nice to have a pencil. And that fits. The only difference is the video that I made for making this, it's a little longer and it doesn't quite, the one that I made in the video doesn't quite fit in here. So all you have to do is just shorten down the main body tube a little bit so that it fits in an Altoid tin. No big deal, just think about your measurements as you're going along. And then the last thing inside this kit is this little bamboo skewer, which you might think, what in the world would you have a little bamboo skewer in there? Um, but you'll see. We'll, um, there'll be a video coming out soon where I use this, so stay tuned. You'll have to see why that is. You may not need a pencil if the knife that you choose has a set of plus scales on it. Um, most of the smaller knives don't have plus scales on their own, but if you change out the scales on the knife that you put in this kit and put plus scales in, plus scales have a pen and the pen is pressurized and will write on most things so you can probably get it to write on wood so generally these things are pressurized and if you look so here's the end of a stick we'll see if we can get some marks yeah it'll write on the end of a stick just fine so that's nice so if you put plus scales on your knife then you may not need to worry about trying to get a pencil in your kit and of course you wouldn't have to make a bullet pencil you could just take a normal pencil and shorten it down so that it would fit. No big deal, that would be just fine. Um, or if you have a stub sitting around. The only reason this is nice is because it kind of protects the tip of the pencil a little bit. And then when you go to use it, you get a full length pencil, which is a little more comfortable to hold. So anyway, not the end of the world for the amount of writing that you're probably gonna be doing here. Cause, um, but anyway, that works out. That's the kit, fits inside this little tin very nicely and now that's ready to go so like subscribe and stay tuned there'll be some videos coming down the pike for the sack whittling um, series that I'm gonna do so thanks a bunch have a good one